15 to 20,000 uh, kilo pairs. Uh, there they are. So this, uh, where are we? Going the wrong way. Okay, so they, they look a little bit like rustic apples, but they are pears, and they do taste like pears. And uh, that is 350 kilos of pears right there. And uh, so these are the three women that were training. Uh, the middle one is the wife of a gentleman called Buddha, but his <laughs> Christian name, because he's a Christian, is Seth. <laughs> and I'll show you a picture of him later. So the, these women uh, are the ones we've chosen from the village. Uh, they're quite excited even though they don't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the round faced guy here on uh, your right is Anu. And who is the country director for Hope Worldwide in Nepal. He is a phenomenal guy. Uh, he works really, really hard and does a great job. Uh, you know the one in the middle? Uh, the guy on the <laughs> other side is a guy called BJ. And uh, BJ is a Hindu. And uh, I think some of you already know the story that uh, <coughs> when we were when we decided we were going to build a factory, we, we thought we were going to process the pears, but we didn't really know what we were going to make. We thought we were going to do jam, or pear juice, or, but we weren't really sure. And uh, I stayed in the village once when the building started, and uh, I stayed at a, um, a hotel uh, on the edge of the village that this guy owns. Called, uh, it's called the Pear Tree uh, Resort Centre. So it's a resort centre. It's uh, a fabulous place. Uh, he also owns a factory uh, and we're in his factory here now. Uh, he owns a factory employing a hundred women making candy, making sweets, okay, so, um, and BJ is a phenomenal, phenomenal guy, so anyone who wants to try, these are some of his sweets, okay, you can try one if you're brave enough, these, these are not made from pears, but the pear ones will be almost identical to these, so these are made of lopsy, which is a very small fruit, and that's what he works with. All right. Uh, they're, they're quite nice. So, uh, so there, there's a few more here, but, but this, this is how the soul, and. Uh, this bag would cost you uh, 70 rupees, which is about 50p. Now, he makes a hundred different varieties of stuff. <laughs> and we were in the old city where all the tourists are, uh, where he, uh, he owned the house, and he showed me around. And all the little cafes and shops have these things hanging up. Oh, wow. The, the, he can't supply enough. Okay, they're, they're in demand. Uh, so he's the main supplier for Kathmandu. He exports to India. But uh, BJ is a gift from God. So I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the uh, in the village, thinking, uh, why why? And I stayed at his resort center. So I talked to the manager the first night. Are they all gone? No. One. They're very nice. I, I, I talked to the resort manager one night, I told him what we're doing, and he said, oh, the owner of this place has a factory that makes, you know, processes fruit. He's coming tonight, would you like to meet him? So 
So I said, absolutely. So I met him, we had a barbecue together, he made a barbecue for me. Wow. Uh, we, we sat out in the open. Uh, and then the following day he took me to his factory, which is about an hour and a half drive from the resort center. And he showed me all the of all cottage industry. So these things are made by hand. So the lopsy are cooked uh, in a big tub over lopsy seeds. So lopsy seeds, there's a big stone in the middle, like a plum stone, and the dry and then the burn. Mm. And they, they heat, the, they don't use gas, they use these lopsy stones. <laughs> and, and they burn mm. and they cook the lopsies and then the women pour it out on a plastic sheet, they sort out all the stones, and they gather all the goo, <laughs> and they put it in a tub, and it keeps for about a year. It's, wow. it's sealed, and then, so at harvest time, they process all the fruit, and then throughout the year, they manufacture the sweets. And we'll be, all, all of our 100,000 kilos of pears have been processed by now took about two weeks. But what we'll do next year, we'll process for probably two months. And then we'll start, we'll have enough to last us the whole year. And we'll make not only enough money to run the centre, but we'll also make more money to develop further projects. Uh, we've done some of the maths on, you know, how much we can sell these for. BJ is training the women, is showing them every step of the way. He'll provide all the materials. He'll put our own logo on the top. He says, you can sell them to anybody you like, but I'll sell as many as you want uh, through me. And uh, not a problem. Mm. 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 So, uh, just phenomenal. Mm. Just absolutely, you know. Uh, there's only one problem with BJ. He's an Arsenal supporter. So, so this is our new, this is the new manager. So we've employed a manager from the village. Uh, sorry, it's not a very good picture. Uh, but this guy here, from the very first time that I went two and a half years ago, he has a little tea shop on the side of the road, corrugated iron tea shop. For, there's a lot of four by fours that go along this road. It's one of the routes into India. And uh, so there's four by fours going by him. And they stop from time to time and have a cup of tea for about two pennies, two pence. Uh, and and he, he, he and his wife from this tea shop. And he helped us all the way through. Not for anything, just, just helped us. Wow. His daughter runs a vegetable stall on the road, and every time Annie goes by, she waves him down, she grabs a bag, she puts some stuff in and gives it to him. Mm. I, I mean, uh, amazing. They have nothing, and yet they're so, so generous. Mm. So this is BJ and his wife. Uh, his wife is the expert. She, she runs the factory. And, and she's a Trojan. I mean, she works so hard. Uh, and uh, they both came. The guy in the door is the son. And uh, they all came. They got stuck in. They showed the women how to sort things out. So this is BJ and his son uh, working away. Uh, and here are the women peeling the, the pears. That's a lot of work. And this is mum and, and son. So, we're going to make two different kinds of, of sweets. One is going to be spicy, uh, kind of sour. So with those, we, we preserve them in salt. Mm. And they've done this from last year's harvest. Uh, so they know it works. I, I tasted a pear that had been in salt for nine and a half months. They washed it off, tasted just as good as new. Wow. And this, this here, we tasted one of these from last year. So 
This is cooked in sugar, so the boiling sugar, and then they're, they're stored in these tubs, and they last for over a year. Wow. And then you process them. Uh, so this. Yeah. So, uh, they're really tasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, any any questions about the factory? Anything you want to kind of... I was just going to ask, it looks like it's all done by hand. I yeah. wonder how time consuming that is and if there's a plan going forward to make it more machine... Less no, yeah. that's a Westerner speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Machines cost money. Uh, Labour yeah. costs nothing. Total of the reverse, okay. So, uh, they, these women have paid uh, 500 rupees uh, a day. There's 150 rupees to the pound. Wow. Okay. Wow. So what's that, three pound something? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they get paid a day. Uh, that, that's good, good pay. The builders who built that place, uh, they got paid 450 rupees a day. Oh, okay, frequently. Uh, and they live there seven days a week, on site in a tent. So, uh, labour is cheap, so why buy machines? Labour is plentiful, okay. We could have had 50 women queuing up to, to get this job. So, Probably about six to eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it tends to expand? Is it tends to expand factory past six as in build another building? Uh, not at this stage, uh, but there is room on the site uh, to to expand if we want to. Okay. Oh. Uh, but. Uh, you can do a lot in that, that room and, and obviously there is a rainy season uh, which is just ending right now so after the harvest uh, you can put a, you can even, we could put a tarpaulin over the middle of that and we could work under there wow. uh, so there's, there's lots of possibilities um, but uh, yeah John, why only here? Sorry, why because that's what they grow in the village. Oh yeah, yeah. So and, and they grow a lot of them, uh, and 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 they sold them. You know, they had a resource, but it wasn't really benefiting them mm. that much. It, once we get this factory going, it will benefit them a lot. Mm. Uh, and the lopsies, do they not grow those? Yeah, they grow lopsy, but. Uh, BJ buys all the lobsy in the area. <laughs> and, and we don't want to... Pears are fine. And they don't work with pears. Uh, they haven't done. So it just, it just works, works pretty well. Okay. Uh, so I was able... Uh, so so that, that's one element. So when we started out this project, it had to be self-funding. We had a pot of money to build a building left over from the earthquake disaster relief fund, uh, but that was it. And so my task was to find something that would be self-sustaining, that we could do something for the village. The goodwill for hope worldwide in the village is phenomenal. Okay, so uh, Ben just came back. Uh, they did a health call uh, for a week in, in the centre. A lot of people from the village came and had their teeth checked, had a, a medical checkup, uh, and uh, they don't have that facility. They've got to go into Kathmandu if, they, if there's something wrong. Uh, and so uh, a lot of people, the councillors, the, the officials, they think we're wonderful. And uh, we've made contact with a local school, so a lot of the people were trained. So in, in, in the school where you'll see two guys that came from, 
they had an 8% pass rate in computer studies in their school. <laughs> because for a school of 600, they've got two computers. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, you can understand. Uh, we opened this, a lot of the students come through here, so the computer classes are run twice a day, six days a week. So in the morning before school for an hour, and then in the afternoon after school for an hour, and the kids come straight from school or before school, and they have computer training. That school had a pass rate this year of 80%. Wow. So that's the difference. Uh, I took eight laptops over with me this time. Uh, <laughs> well, so I, I was carrying them all over the place. I mean, uh, I had 30 kilos weight limit. I took one shirt. <laughs> and eight computers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is the center, these are the, the, the kids, and uh, so we've hired uh, a local guy, the shop, as a tech, uh, he's doing the computer training. Uh, this is uh, Dewise. Dewise is in his final year of uh, uh, a BA in computer science. He's a whiz. He's an absolute whiz. So he, he took all eight, eight laptops, he's cleaned them, he's sorted them, he's got them all oh, up and running, he's put word on everything. And uh, he, he's amazing. His mum, uh, the, the both part of the church there, his mum works uh, as the cook in the school, mm -hmm. and the wife is uh, he's going to graduate this year. Oh. But uh, he oversees the training both uh, here, so they have a training centre in Kathmandu at the school. They now are training the children in, in, in the school with computer classes. They've got uh, another training centre in Baratnika, which is a town about six hours' drive away, uh, where there's a small church. And then they've, they've, we've got the centre in uh, Chamele. Wow. So th this is uh, me handing over two of the laptops to the mm -hmm. head teacher of the school, and uh, they they are uh, delighted. So we've increased the computer stock by 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. So. Uh, Again, they don't look very happy, but they are. <laughs> so let, let's talk about the uh, microfinance stuff. So the church here uh, donated thirty thousand pounds last year uh, to set up this scheme. Again. We didn't really know what we were doing. We spent a lot of time visiting different loan agencies uh, in Kathmandu. We sat down, we talked things through. We talked to a Christian who got a license to run a loan agent. You have to have a, a license to be governed by the government. Strict rules there. Uh, and then uh, we, we found someone in the village. Uh, and uh, super, super guy. Uh, you'll see him in a minute. Uh, and they are like uh, a, a cooperative. Okay, so they're set up to help people succeed. And they, they lend, they lend money, but they also do due diligence with the money they lend. So they want. They won't just come in, people come in and say, I want to open a shop. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, where are you? Yeah, there are four other shops right near you. Probably mm -hmm. owning another general store is probably not one. Mm -hmm. Can you think of something else? 
So they'll, 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 work, with, they'll work with people. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't borrow money on your own. You've got to be in a syndicate of four people. Mm -hmm. Only one person gets the money. <laughs> the other three stand surety for the one. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't pay, they pay. One percent of the money that they charge goes into a, a, an insurance pot that's uh, run uh, by the government and not by the loan agent. So there's a, there's a buffer for people who may become very sick or, or die. They'll use this pot to, to meet their needs so the family won't be burdened mm. by this. Really great scheme. And... Uh, they normally charge, I mean, interest rates in, in Nepal are about 25%. If I went into a bank and wanted to borrow some money, mm -hmm. that's about where they'd start talking to me, okay? Uh, so they, they lend for about 15 to 20%. Uh, the money that Hope gave is being loaned uh, for 11%. 10% plus 1% for the Hope is receiving 8% of that, okay? So every three months, the loan agent in the village sends a check to Hope for 8% of the money that we lend. And so there's an income from that for Hope. It's servicing the village. It's being managed properly, not by Hope, but by someone else who's doing it for 2%. And uh, so, uh, I went to see some of the businesses that have been set up uh, with it's quite exciting, okay. So this, this lady uh, is smiling, and, uh, <laughs> which is quite unusual because people tend not to smile there. But she's really happy, this is her shop, and she said it's doing phenomenally well, okay. So she borrowed. Uh, she borrowed uh, 50,000 uh, rupees. Okay, who can tell me how much that is in pounds? 150 to the pound. 300. So she borrowed about 50. Then she borrowed another 170 quid. Yeah. Okay, and she's really really happy and, and the business is, is going okay uh, so this is the loan agent uh, he's a super super guy and uh, this guy here uh, he borrowed one lakh which is a hundred thousand rupees which is about 700 quid uh, and he, uh, uh, his field is actually the other side of there, and it was uh, a long way, so we didn't go. But <laughs> he, he's growing cucumber, and the first harvest is made three lakh wow. from the one oh, lakh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. So he's very, very happy. Uh, there, there are other, there are other people. Uh, one guy uh, is raising buffalo and goats. They don't eat cows in Nepal, being Hindu. Uh, the cows rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't touch a cow. If you knock a cow over on the road, you're in big, big trouble. <laughs> and they are in the road. But uh, they don't eat cows, so they eat buffalo. Uh, and uh, so eat this. This other guy, I've not got a picture of him, but he, he, he's raising buffalo. Uh, there's another guy, a, a, another family who've opened a chemist shop in the village, and there's another guy who opened a stationery shop uh, with the money that we have got. Okay. So this is Seth. And this is his daughter. Uh, and this is his house, and uh, he's uh, trying to build another house. Uh, his house was destroyed in the earthquake, uh, so that's where he lives. Uh, 
and uh, he is a jeweler. He makes uh, he makes earrings and rings and all kind of things. For a, a, a company in Kathmandu, they, they send him orders and he, he makes them. Uh, works not very good at the moment, uh, but uh, again, when I first went to the village and stayed there, I was sitting on a stone thinking I made a mistake. I shouldn't have stayed in the village. I should have stayed in Kathmandu. Because there wasn't a lot to do. Watching guys digging holes in the ground for a week is uh, not much fun. <laughs> and this guy walked up to me, and his English is very, very limited. My Nepalese is even less. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, are you Christian? So I said, yeah. He said, so am I. And he, he took me back to his house. Uh, his wife made some tea, we prayed together. I don't think he understood what I was saying, but we prayed together. This is his daughter who's been in 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 college, uh, just just home. Uh, but uh, again, just the possibilities of beginning uh, a ministry there in the village. Mm -hmm. Very delicate. There are people in the village who are very cautious. You know. Uh, it's illegal to convert to Christianity in, in, in the fall. Uh, but a lot of people are doing it. So there's a lot of young people in, in the fall who are becoming Christians. Oh, it, it's really encouraging. Uh, and uh, this is another set. <laughs> so uh, BJ gave, gave me this uh, uh, Nepalese uh, little outfit. Uh, for Seth. So this is Seth sporting his, uh, his Nepalese outfit. <laughs> so, um, if anyone likes uh, Nepalese tea, loose tea that you can uh, brew in a real pot, uh, I got a lot of it. So if you want to take this, you can take it. Also, I was given these by BJ. Uh, if anybody, they're like a little shoulder bag or something. If anybody wants to take one of those, you can do. There's some more candy up here. Uh, so, uh, I want to really encourage us that giving from our plenty, uh, you know, uh, it is maybe a bit of a sacrifice, but the effects that it is having uh, in a place like Nepal, uh, it is phenomenal. The, the money that we're going to give this year will be for the school in Kathmandu. So there's about 120 children in the school. Um, it, it needs some work. The school's been going for 20 years. Uh, it's been supported mainly by uh, our church in the UK from Surrey, uh, that was uh, a lot of those people, even though they're not part of the church anymore, still uh, send money to the poor. But there is a shortfall, and there's a need for us to, to step in. Again, our, our goal is to try and get the, the school uh, with a standard of excellence and also self funding eventually. Uh, we're quite a few years off that. But uh, helping this year will be significant. Uh, this year, uh, a lady called Rachel, who's a qualified counsellor, is going. And she's going to spend two weeks at the school. Uh, she's going to uh, train some of the teachers. Uh, but also, she's going to do some uh, uh, play therapy with the children. And then, uh, in a few weeks' time, uh, Geraldine Kendall is going mm. uh, for two weeks uh, to do uh, kind of a, an overview of what's needed and come back and report so that we can know how best to train the teachers, how best to help them uh, to develop uh, uh, the school in, in a good way. Uh, 
so that that's where our funds will go this year. And uh, yeah, any questions? So there's basically two schools, one in Kathmandu and one in the village, is that right? There's two schools? No, there's only one school. Uh, the, the place in the village is a training centre. Right. Okay? And mm -hmm. a factory. Okay. But there's another school that you gave computers to that's nothing to do with us. There's, there's, the there's, there's ah. a local school in the village that we have kind of uh, obviously visited. We've told them about the computer training. We've, we've, very shortly, we're starting in English classes as well. Uh, they're going to start in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, the school, we're in kind of partnership with the school there, helping the school out. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank Is there anything you'd like us particularly to be praying for, like any specific? Um, I, I think uh, pray for Seth and his family that we can uh, build uh, with them. Uh, they are they are Bible based. They're, they're not Catholic. They're, they're kind of uh, Bible based Christian people who uh, read the Bible, who pray, who, who want, want to be taught more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, pray, it's a kind of delicate situation. We're not going to start Bible classes in, in the centre, because that would, at this stage, that would be a no, -no. Uh, But, uh, you know, developing something where, uh, you know, we've met one other Christian in the village, so they're dotted around. They keep quiet because it, it's, uh, yeah, it is quite delicate. So pray for that. Pray for the school, because we, we're going to give to the school this year. So pray for the school. <coughs> pray that, you know, it can be become clear a way forward. When we started this, we would not got a clue what we're doing. So with the school, it needs to be self-funding within five years, and it needs to be a school of excellence. And uh, we want to move towards towards that. Yeah, so those two things would be great. Right. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Why don't we pray now? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Let's pray. <clears throat> and Father, as we're watching um, both pictures and listening to John, it stirs our hearts. Probably makes us all feel like we wish we could go and visit and see what's going on and and how you're working working there through John and through the Hope employees and volunteers. Father, we're grateful that, that what we give from here has an impact far, far away and has a transformative effect on people's lives. Help us to uh, be generous in our giving uh, when we come to give at the beginning of November for this and for the leprosy colony in, in New Delhi. We pray, Father, that the money would go to good use. But, Father, we pray also that, that we'd remember to pray for Seth and his family, for the school. Help us to remember to pray, not just to give the money and forget, but to, to pray and do what we can where we are too. We thank you for John. Pray and strengthen him, refresh him after his visit. And, uh, Father, we pray that, pray that your will will be done in that village and in the school. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.